Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We are on episode two of the epic rescue of the search and rescue John boat. We're going in a new direction. Help me not screw up my John boat. So I'm, I'm totally like open to feedback here. So if you see me do something that's crazy or you know a better way, please throw it in the comments because I'm, I read those comments. This is not a big channel. If you write it, I'm going to read it. Also, this is not a place to be super critical. I'm just a dude who's out here trying to do a thing. So yeah, helpful, helpful, constructive comments are always welcome. So I know in the last episode, we talked about how we would move into working on the motor, but it occurred to me that I could work on the motor whenever, right? Like I could be doing that in the dead of winter and it would be just fine. Things like painting or waiting for things to cure. Those are not the kind of things that you want to do when it's crazy cold outside. We've got a limited window to be able to do all that stuff. So first thing we're going to do is the whole work. One of the things I did not anticipate was how preoccupying this project was going to be. The amount of time that you spend thinking about what to do, how to do it, or even if it needs to be done. Like this whole, like this is in pretty good shape, right? Like, is this painted? I, I don't know. Is it just oxidized aluminum? It's got to have some kind of coating on it, right? Is the kind of coating that's on here the thing that's effectively going to stop me from being able to apply whatever product I want to apply? I don't know. The one thing I do know, however, is that I don't want to do it again. This stuff is expensive. Wait. Let me show you the product that we have that we're going to put on the bottom of the boat. Fasco epoxies, steel flex, super slick, two part epoxy coating. This stuff is $70 for a quart. 70, $70. Mm, 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 mm. But it's also the product that everybody said is the best product to use. It's thick, it's durable, it'll help you seal up any holes that you got. For the type of fishing that I do, where I'm in a lot of vegetation and a lot of weeds, this is going to help us out. We're not going to take any chances. The hole has to get stripped. If you're watching one video on restoration of a John boat, you've probably watched 30 in the past like week. Everybody does the same thing. People go out and buy paint strippers. For some reason, paint going onto an aluminum hull is, is particularly durable. What, whatever. Like, like I'm not going to mess around with any of that stuff. We are going right to the angle grinder. And I'm pretty sure that's going to take most of the paint off. So get ready for some time lapses because uh, we're going to do this whole thing. This is going to take a really long time. All right, so again, I'm not sure how much of this is just oxidation or how much of it is some kind of paint product. All that stuff that you're taking off the boat doesn't magically disappear. It becomes particulate. Teeny tiny microscopic chunks of aluminum that go everywhere, including onto your shirt, into your beard, right? And onto pretty much anything else that you have around you. So if you're worried about that, make sure you take proper precautions, Tyvek suit dust barrier, whatever it is that you need to put up. But we're looking pretty clean here. Now this is not gonna help you out when it comes to the bigger dents and creases that you may have in your hull. Like for example here, there's another one here. I don't see anything that's super compromised there. Hopefully that's something that will get filled in as this epoxy product self levels. Also, just a thought, uh, wear gloves. Yeah.
Well, that's one half the boat done. I'm not going to bore you with making you watch the other half, but before I brought the boat in the garage, flipped it over and started working on this, there were a couple of things that I did do to the hull that we're going to have to address here in a minute. Namely, removing the center bench seat so I could have a larger swath of flat floor, uh, and also removing like the oar locks, the handles that you have up towards the front for people to hold on to. Yeah, so there's some holes in the sides of the boat that are gonna have to be addressed. We'll get into that shortly, but go check out, see how I did it. Not all boats are constructed the same way, right? So these structural ribs that you've got here, if they continue underneath the bench seat, which they do, that means that this bench is not structural. It's not actually physically holding the sides of the boat together. Now this whole boat is held together effectively with rivets, right? So as far as taking these out, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. I'm gonna get a little heavy hand. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the flat plated screwdriver and a hammer. I'm gonna pop out these braces that we've got here. Then I'm gonna go after the rivets that we got on the side and I'm gonna pull the whole thing out as one unit. Once I do that, I will have almost six feet of floor. Do the other side. Just a quick note, this boat was really well taken care of by somebody. Because there's no evidence that this one got waterlogged at all. Look at that. Like new. And this boat goes back to what? The 90s? Now we can see how much we actually really opened up by taking that out of there. I mean, that's a huge football space floor, right? Plenty of room. That's gonna work out super, super well for us. So far, I've had to knock out a couple of rivets that are right up near the top of the gunnels. And filling those in with new pop rivets and sealing that up is not gonna be a problem at all. The next major phase of this boat build is gonna be getting the boat off the trailer, flipping it over, getting that stored in here. Any holes that we're gonna to need to deal with need to be identified now. See right over there? You see right over there? Doesn't make sense to go ahead and remove those mounts. And here's why. My plan is to have storage built along the sides here. Those little rails that we have here at the top, they do two things for us. One, they're already sealed holes. Two, they are at level with the rest of the benches. So that gives me a nice even platform. 
if I want to go ahead and I want to build out my framing, I can have storage on this side, I can have storage on this side. I don't need to mess with those at all. I think the smart play is to leave them. I may regret that later. For sure though, this little guy right here and the corresponding guy on the other side, the ore locks, those definitely have to come out. All right, so the ore locks are removed. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's where the handles were in the front. So that's seven holes on each side, 14 holes all together that are going to have to get filled. Now, one of the things you may have noticed if you've watched a lot of these videos about how to do this type of restoration is that I didn't go through a whole lot of trouble to wash the boat and do all that other good stuff before I just started taking off paint. And the reason for that was it didn't matter what was on here. Whatever it was was going away. There was no point. There's also a benefit to doing it in this way. And that's preserving evidence of where the water lines were prior to the work being done to the boat. So we've got a water line here. And we've got another water line right about here. There's no guarantee that the water line that I'm going to have on this boat is going to be the same as the water line that existed before. In fact, it's pretty likely that it won't. Weight is going to get distributed completely differently in this boat than the way that it was when it was just an open hull. But this gives me some idea of the buoyancy and it gives me the ability to mark uh, roughly about the water line for where I want to put that super slick product. It's pretty simple rudimentary marks there that tell me how far I want that product to come up on the belly. The product container says that one quart is enough to cover approximately 30 square feet. This is a 14 foot boat. So if you do the math on that, 30 square feet is going to be cutting it pretty close. I did happen to go ahead and get two quarts of the product. My plan is to only use exactly what we have to use and nothing more. That means the super slick is only going to go up as high on the hull as I feel like it needs to to meet that water line. Well, I'd say it probably took a total of about five hours, but the whole boat is done. Everything has been removed. Whatever that product was that was on the underside, that clear coat, all that's gone. All the paint, all the decals gone off the back everything off of the transom is done as well. There are a couple of lessons learned. First is that that braided spoke wheel, it's a really good way to go. It was quick. It was really quick. Second is make sure you wear a respirator. This produced a remarkable amount of aluminum shavings, many of which settled onto the floor, but as you can see, right, like some of the really fine stuff got in between my mask and my mustache. I would hate to have been in an enclosed space not wearing a respirator doing this job. And the last thing that I would say is there's no reason to do this, like the, the taking of the paint in an enclosed space. As a matter of fact, it's probably not a good idea to do that. Uh, if I had it to do over again, I would have taken the boat outside and done it there because it's extremely messy. Okay, so the bulk of the hard stuff is done. Spent all that time Stripping the boat hull down. We vacuumed up most of the particulate. I've taken a shower to get all that stuff off of my skin. Um, by the way, while I was in there, found three pieces of wire brush embedded in my thigh. Unpleasant, but they came right out. Not a big deal. Wear pants when you're using a wire brush. So the step that we're on now is we're gonna wipe down the areas that we intend to paint. Paint, but you said you were gonna be doing Fasco. I am, but I'm going to do the paint first. The Fesco is allegedly so slick, you can't even put painter's tape on it. And I want a nice clean line. So what we're going to do, we're going to lay down our tape line. We are going to paint everything above the water line, a lovely shade of blue picked out by my wife. By the way, gentlemen, top tip. One of the ways to get your wife, partner, significant other more on board with your projects is to involve them. What do I care? what color the boat is, floats, does the things that I want it to do. It could also be a thing that my wife wants it to be. And she picked out a good one. 
a really lovely satin shade of blue called the uh, legume. Lagoon. Legume is a peanut. Okay, so to make sure that all the paint goes on smoothly, sticks forever, we're gonna hit it with a self-etching primer for mistoleum. We are gonna thoroughly clean the hull with acetone, and uh, then we're gonna mark our tape lines for where the super slick will eventually be. Any questions? No? All right. I am an idiot. You probably saw I just got to that one spot on the hull. I haven't filled the holes yet, so let's spend some time talking about exactly how we deal with those holes. Hi. So, uh, yeah, once again, friendly reminder, I'm not an expert. Uh, if you ask me if I have ever plugged a hole in a boat before, I'm going to tell you no. At least, not with a rivet. <clears throat> but we're going to give this a shot. Let's take a look at the hole. We're going to drill these holes out one quarter of an inch. Then we're going to stick a rivet in there. I'll just show you. All right. Making these one quarter of an inch in size, exactly. Is that going to go in? That one goes. Is it stuck now? Please don't be stuck. Don't be stuck! Man, that's snug. That's what she said. <laughs> Don't stick the rivet in until you're ready to actually do the thing. No time! Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to coat this one quarter inch by half inch rivet with fast cure sealant. Now, a lot of people will use 5200. I'm using Loctite. Let's see what the specs on this thing say. Works best for teak, other woods, fiberglass, vinyl, glass, FRP, metal, gel coat, polycarbonate and most plastics. But this stuff feels like it's already like mostly cured, but okay. There's some coming out. We'll insert this into our hole. Hey, look at that. There we go. And then we will use our super cool air rivet tool. Dude, this rivet gun is dope. Harbor Freight, 70 bucks. Buy one. Buy one. Wow. And I think we're all sealed up. Now we gotta wait for this to cure. We'll come back. Do some painting. Obviously, it is now much later than it was when we kicked this off. I, I Everything's curing. The holes are filled. All that other good stuff. But going through and cleaning everything up with this acetone. I mean, it's... It's nuts. 50 or so rags that look like this. But we are now at the point where we can start applying primer. You always have to read the instructions, but the print on these things is getting smaller and smaller every year, just one second. I believe we have what we need to be able to read the fine print. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I see what they did here. Clean area to be primed with mineral spirits to remove all grease, oil, wax, and dirt. Big check mark. Your mom is funny looking. See, they always sneak in these messages thinking nobody's going to read. Uh, ba 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 for the best adhesion, apply two to three thin coats and allow each coat to dry for two minutes, two minutes before applying the next coat. Allow final coat of self-etching primer to dry for a minimum of three or four hours. Okay, so we have Rust-Oleum self-etching automotive primer. Let's see how well it does. 
First coat is on. First coat is on. Been a few minutes. We're gonna do coat number two. Second can. That's three coats of primer. We're gonna call it a day. Come back and hit it again tomorrow. Get out of here before we get woozy. Well, it's the next morning and magically the boat is painted. It's blue. Managed to get a pretty clean line all the way around. Tracking what I think is gonna be the water line. And there's that mark that we had. And it carries on down. Now the next trick is going to be masking all this off. Making a nice crisp line here. Hopefully not ruining it. We're going to mix up the two-part epoxy. Put that on here. Well, we have arrived at what the French refer to as Le Moment de Truth. I think we're ready to address the underbelly of the boat. We are all masked off. And this is why I needed to paint the underbelly first. You see this little like millimeter of paint that's coming through right there? Yeah. That's gonna be my overlap with the super slick. We got a little bit of overspray on the hull. That's okay. I've seen lots of people apply this product directly to old paint. So I'm sure it's fine. It's clean, it's dusted. It's time to do the thing. Let's take a second to go through all of the stuff that we're gonna use as we paint all of this. First, we have the product. Fasco Super Slick, two-part epoxy. This is part one, this is part two. Haven't read the instructions, probably should do that. We have pigment, in this case, going with black. Gotta buy this separately. We have a mixing bowl. Uh, we are going to do small batches of the epoxy. I've made sure this is all cleaned out. Um, by the way, top tip, don't throw your old food containers away. They're always useful. Keep a box of them in your garage or your workspace. You never know when they're going to come in handy. Paint mixers. This is what you want to use. You don't want bubbles in the epoxy. This is the way to start. A one quarter nap, not foam roller. From what I understand is the epoxy starts to set, the foam starts to stick to it. It's not a good look. This is what you want to use. Probably spent way too much money on this. If we have our roller tray, last but not least, a scale. This is going to help us make sure that we have the right proportions of the product as we do the thing. Instructions on this product say that we are supposed to mix our pigment, right, with our part two uh, before we do anything. So we're gonna go ahead and pop the top on this. We are not gonna mix up the whole quart. I don't want to waste any of this product. It is effectively one-to-one, -one, so all we really need to do is remember how much of this stuff we put in. I'm going to give this part two a little bit of a mish. All right. And then we're going to pour in... Where are we at here? About half. Where are we at there? A little more. We'll go that's 183 grams. Now we're gonna put in our pigment and we'll hit tear. Okay, that's at zero grams. We're not supposed to put in any more than one ounce, so we need about a half an ounce. That stuff is thick. A little bit more we'll call it 20 grams there we go 19 come on get there there that 21 okay we'll call it 20. go ahead and mix this up now everything i've heard about this particular product i believe it was uh send it john boats who said thin for the win multiple thin coats as opposed to one big thick cloppy coat. If you do it real thin, then as soon as you get to the end of the boat, 
you can come back and start right back at the beginning. Come on. All right, part one, 184 grams. Yeah, this one's sealed. Wow. Super clear. Coming out kind of quick. You guys watching that number? Let me know when it stops at 184. No reason to go fast here. Mm -hmm. Coming up on it. Pretty close. Pretty close. I will take it. All right, so we got to work fast here because now we are into our working time. The second these two components touch each other is the second that reaction starts to occur. Stuff is nice and thick. I'm digging it. Scrape this stuff down. Alright, turn this off. Transfer to our container. Start to apply this stuff quickly. So you can see we've used up pretty much all of that first batch and we made it, I don't know, somewhere between three quarters and seven eighths of the way down the boat with one coat. So keep that in mind if you're going to order this product. Uh, one quart supposedly covers 30 square feet. We've used about half a quart. One quart is definitely enough to cover the bottom of a 14 foot John boat one time. How you doing? It goes on pretty thick, but not crazy thick. So if you're thinking this is going to be a magic solution for sealing up the bottom of your boat, it's not going to be. Um, unless you went like many, many coats. Um, this is too... I don't think I need to do more. I could. I have that other quart here. But I think I'd rather save that. And I'm glad that I did this in the way where I only mixed up a little bit at a time because it gives me a, a sense of how far this stuff can go. All right, let's let's uh, let's get ready to do the untaping because you got to do that before this stuff starts to cure. Well, it's not the best I've ever done, but it's serviceable. It'll work. Right there. That's irritating. Not terrible. Ah, yeah. mm. Mm. Oh well, looks okay. All right, now we're gonna let this dry. We'll get back with our final thoughts. I know I'm griping, but I'm actually pretty excited about this. It is pretty late and I gotta work tomorrow but I wanted to come out and check on this Ooh. it's been about 12 hours since this was applied and it feels super slick imagine that all that is filled in nicely 
this feels exactly the way I hoped it would. It's not fully cured yet, but I've been wanting to try this. Oh, come on, I wanted it to fall off. Well, I can tell you that I am definitely pleased with what I'm seeing here. I do have another quart of the product that I can apply. Um, not sure if I'm going to. Going to spend some time thinking about it because I have other things that I kind of like to use that product for. I think it'd be great on the bottom of my kayak. But I think this is going to work out pretty well. I, I really do. I'm, I'm, I feel good about it. But I'm interested in what you think. Are you in the middle of restoring your own boat? Is it something that you're thinking about doing? Are you making improvements? Is super sick a product that you're thinking about trying? Let me know. I want to hear about it. From here, I think the next step is to go ahead and do all of the necessary maintenance stuff to that trailer. We've got to get the lights up and running. We've got to see what we can do as far as getting that thing cleaned up. We've got to wait for this to cure all the way before we can do anything involving putting it back on that trailer. But that just means that we've got some time. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.